planners and bullet journals, art journals, art projects, organized planner sheet. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Organized Planner Chic. I'm Lucinda and if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and select the bell for notifications. Well, first I want to thank all my Patreon members who help make it possible to create videos like this. Yay to my awesome patrons! And if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic. Okay, you guys, I show this junk journal, which I made in a very recent video, but I was using some elastic that I stitched on the back and a button on the front. I just pulled the elastic over the button to close it, but it's gotten too thick now. I can't do that. So I just slid a piece of, a piece of ribbon through that loop I added kind of tied it around and made a loop in the back with that elastic and I just slid the ribbon on there so that I can tie it and it can get as fat as it wants to because I've only completed one signature so far which I flipped through in a previous videos video so we are starting with a completely blank page except for at the top right I have one of my armbands for my three ER visits in the last two weeks. Yes, I'm going to tell you the story about that. Um, and then one of those little things they put on you when they're checking your heart and all that kind of stuff. So, but what we're going to do to change this from a blank white off-white canvas to something colorful is I'm taking some watercolor crayons that I got from the, I bought from the Phoenix Museum of Art, ooh, two years ago, I guess I would say, from um, there in the children's section. And I just colored that on the background with a kind of a light blue and a yellow. And I thought I would just take my new, um, what brand is this? Princeton, new Princeton wash brush. It's a nice big one. And I'm so excited to get that. I ordered it from Amazon because I wanted one that would, you know, could really brush on a big page instead of going over and over with a smaller brush. So I'm loving it. It's really short though, but yeah, it works really well. It's synthetic. And so, yeah, I'm just going over it with some water. So I've used these watercolor crayons before, but not with a, with water added. I would color, draw something with, there, with it and then take my finger and smooth out the crayon and it has a really nice effect. This is my first time actually using water and this is not watercolor paper, but I think it turned out okay. Of course, I knew it wasn't going to do what watercolor paper allows you know it to do but I'm just taking a blow dryer because ain't nobody got time to wait for it to dry today and I did notice where I kind of went back over it with the brush the second time while it was all wet that it did lighten it a little bit so some of those areas that I went over with the brush look a little bit lighter and I like that it gave me some more variation so here I've got a Polaroid or fake Polaroid little frame. I got a, a set of 12 of those from DStash from one of my planner groups, which is nice. And um, in that picture, I just printed from my HP Sprocket printer that I got for Christmas. And it's just a picture that I put on Facebook when I was telling everybody, uh, thank you for praying for me for everything that happened. And so I'm going to try to tell you what's happening on the screen while I also tell you what happened to me over the last two and a half weeks, I guess it's been. And so I, one day I was just brushing my teeth and I felt a cramp in my chin. It was really weird. It didn't last long, but it was painful. And I just kind of blew it off. You know, as I'm getting older, maybe some of those weird things happen because it didn't last, like I said. But then the next day in the evening, I felt a knot, you know, a nodule there under my chin. It wasn't big, but it was painful. And so the next morning, Friday morning, I went to um, urgent care and they said it was probably uh, infection in my salivary gland. They were going to give me an antibiotic, which they did give me a prescription for an antibiotic. I'm just rubbing some excess glue off at the bottom of the screen. That's why it looked weird right there. And using my bone folder to smooth it off. And because I had some glue on the top that I didn't want there, I'm just rubbing it off slowly with my finger to get it all off. Um, so yeah, so I went urgent care and they said I needed to follow up with my primary care doctor in about a week, make sure it doesn't get any bigger and all that good stuff. So I went and got the antibiotic that was on a Friday. 
Then over the weekend, the nodule got 10 times bigger. Um, I don't know, maybe 30 times bigger. It was huge. And it was not huge before. It was huge and it was painful. And I started to swell a little bit along my jaw on the right side. And so then Monday morning, I called and I was able to get into my primary care doctor amazingly that same day. So this, you guys, I'm cutting around here the little button part, but this is one of the things that they connect to you when they're checking your heart, you know, doing the EKG and all that, which wind up happening Saturday, but we haven't even gotten to that yet. And I'm just trimming around where I cut off the little snap part so that it won't be sticking up and I can put it here on my in my junk journal. So yeah, so I went to my primary care doctor and she said, she looked at it and she said, you need to go to the emergency room now. And so I'm like kind of freaking out because <laughs> I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, it was huge and it hurt, but I didn't think it was that bad. She's like, yeah, you need to go because you need a CAT scan and I can't get one scheduled for you today. Um, and so you need to go to the emergency room. And I'm concerned, she was concerned about it being an abscess or cutting off my airflow so then I went the emergency room was really close I went there and um, the nurse practitioner there said that the prescription that I was given that Friday before so remember everything started on a Wednesday but that Friday before at urgent care she said that that antibiotic was not the right one so now when I think back in hindsight I'm thinking probably if I had had the right antibiotic and the beginning it would not have gotten as bad as it did so I put the first uh, antibiotic there I tore it and it's sitting there on the spread on the left side um, and then at the emergency room she gave me a new antibiotic and told me to stop taking the one that I was given and then I needed to see um, an ENT ear nose and throat doctor within two weeks and so then um, so that was Monday so I'm taking the medicine, I'm not feeling good, I'm feeling tired, having pain, you know, of course I've got an infection, and, um, but I'm doing, you know, I'm resting as best as I can, and I'm drinking lots of fluids, I'm putting the heating pad on my chin, and uh, what else, was just, oh, sucking on lemon drops and all that stuff to stimulate saliva, which the first doctor told me to do. And so then, um, so that was funny. So then fri uh, Friday, I'm taking a shower, and um, so this is a week after I saw the first doctor. So I just put here on the spread, you guys, I just wanted to kind of bring out the colors. So you see that the scrap of paper that's under that big white thing with the big blue center that was part of the EKG, that's kind of my color theme, those different colors that are in there. So I'm kind of trying to work that on here. And um, and of course, I wind up in the end getting three different prescriptions for Walgreens. So I thought that should be in this spread. <laughs> okay, so, um, so yeah, so then that Friday, I go to um, take a shower and I have this really painful spot in my neck. And I don't feel a big nodule, maybe a small one, but it hurt and <laughs> I would wince in pain. I winced in pain to touch it and when I wound up going back to the emergency room, I winced in pain every time they touched it. So, But before I went to the emergency room for the second time, I called my primary care doctor's office, which they were, were doing the referral or whatever consult for me to see the ENT doctor. And um, they said, you know, you were supposed to call if it got worse. And I was like, well, I'm calling, but the initial issue is not worse. In fact, it's going down just a tiny bit, um, just a tiny bit. But I could kind of tell, I could tell it was starting to go down. Um, I said, this is something new. And she said, well, it might just be moving. It might be that that infection is moving. Um, you need to go back to the emergency room. So I'm like, great. So I go back to the emergency room. They couldn't, didn't want to do another um, CAT scan because I had just had one on Monday and that's a lot of radiation. And so here on the video, you guys, I'm just trying to fit the right color. So I thought that other paper that had all of the flowers was really pretty, but I thought it was too much and it was really conflicting. I needed something a little more solid. And so I came up with this piece. 
Um, and so um, there at the ER the second time they didn't do the CAT scan, um, I can't take NSAIDs, so non-steroidal -anti anti-inflammatory medicines like uh, ibuprofen and um, the leave and all that and all the stuff they want to give you at the doctor's office in the hospital, I can't take because I have a history of peptic ulcers. And so they wanted to give me something that they thought was going to be really great for all the pain I was having, but I can't, couldn't take it. And then I had taken Tylenol because I started having a headache, a really bad headache, um, before I went to the ER the second time and so they couldn't give me any time off because I already taken some and so, which was fine you know I felt like I was managing the pain okay at that point um, but they felt like probably what was happening is was that my body was trying to fight off the infection which is a good sign and that and one of the signs of that is finding a lymph node spot of another area in that region um, best I can understand that having some lymph node issues because in the first time when I went to the ER they, they the CAT scan results showed that I had some lymph nodes and there was inflammation around them and they were in the area where I was having some inflammation and it was probably um, an infection but I needed to follow up with an ENT and so anyway they decided to um, just watch it and make sure I was still doing the fluids and resting and all that stuff and to call, you know, go back if there are any other issues. They gave me another, they gave me a referral, even though my primary care doctor was doing it for ENT, the ER, both visits gave me referrals for ENTs. And so that was that Friday, the second one. So here I found the, the paper here on the video that I felt like is gonna be perfect to put my CAT scan results in because I was going to use that other kind of pink paper, but. It was the perfect size of paper, but not the right colors. So here we go here. <laughs> All right, so that was that um, that Friday, um, a week after I had seen the urgent care doctor, after I, you know, the Friday after the Monday where I had gone to the ER, you know, I went to the second ER visit. So that was that Friday. Then the next day, Saturday at like three in the morning, I wake up to go to the bathroom I go to bed with a headache, but I wake up and my head is hurting so bad and I am completely nauseated. I'm dizzy. I can't stand up. I crawled to get to the bathroom and then I kind of used the furniture and stuff and used the counter to pull myself up and then I couldn't stay up and I got on the floor and I yelled out at my husband who had to dress me. He had to call 911, dress me. The um, paramedics came, you know, checked all my vitals, which they said were good, except for my heart rate was pretty fast for me to be lying down on the floor. They had to carry me down the stairs, <laughs> those gentlemen, uh, in a blanket uh, to put me in the car. My husband took me to the ER. And long story short there, apparently I was dehydrated and dizzy, but my checkout papers don't say anything about the nausea, but the nausea was the absolute worst part. And so I'm just taping this in with some washi tape, you guys, so that I can make it a flip or like a little booklet sort of. And so um, they um, told me that, well, they gave me morphine for the pain and, um, and then they said that what did they say? Gosh, I'm losing my train of thought. Oh, they gave me a prescription for some nausea medication. I don't know what anti-nausea medication they gave me in the hospital, but they gave me a prescription for after I got out and told me to completely rest until I was 100% clear of the infection. And so then, um, you know, the next day I like slept almost all day in and out of consciousness because of that morphine. But then um, my head was just hurting, and then I, the sun, that Sunday, I could not sleep because it was this weird pain, like almost a squeezing, stinging pain. And so um, then a couple of days, I think, into it, and it was like a three-day prescription fast pack. I realized I read that on the bottle may cause headache. I stopped taking it <laughs> and I started going back to my ginger tea, just a lot of it that I normally would use for digestion and it helps ease it. And so today, that all that started like on the 
25th or something of March and today which is the 19th or 20th is the first day that I feel completely normal like myself but I still have a nodule and I have a um, appointment on Monday to go see the ENT it's way smaller now and yeah you guys so I realized that I did not do a flip through of this well there's not really a flip through but looking at the spread without all the junk in the background but all I'm doing is adding the summary of everything I just told you guys that I posted on Facebook and then that will complete it thank you so much for watching today's video I hope you enjoyed it if so please give it a thumbs up and, subs and subscribe you can also check me out on Instagram at organized planner chic where I post all of my creative ventures and adventures also I have two Facebook groups the local one is called Phoenix Planner Friends for Christ and there we do um, we meet in person and every month normally and have lots of planner fun lots of de-stash and a potluck and all that and then the one for anyone around the world is called organized planner chic crew and there we do giveaways and we try to stay in touch just about every day with Facebook live and different videos and posts and all that good stuff and then if you are interested in supporting me on patreon just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic and here let's look at this very last section I'm just rubbing it in and I'm gonna fold it so that it will completely you know it can be a little flip and that takes care of the complete spread you guys well thank you so much have a fantastic day and until next time Happy planning!